Hello, this is Jenny, and it's take two, you all. I started recording this in a class where a student wasn't there at like the eight minute mark. That's usually the magic number for me. If they're not there by eight minutes, they're usually not arriving. Well, the student showed up at like 15, 16, 17 minutes into the class. They're only 25 minute classes, so. But, um, so I am restarting this video so I don't have to go through editing and I can just go ahead and, and upload it. All right. Uh, let's go ahead. Actually, right now I have a trial class, which I only have to stay in for 15 minutes, and I'm eight minutes into that one, so I don't think this kid's going to show up, and even so, at the 15-minute mark, I can click out um, of it, because I only get paid for half of it. So, I might as well leave at the 15-minute mark, so here we go. All right, uh, let's start with numbers. I got on the scale this morning, and I hit the 160s. <laughs> Thank goodness. 169.7, but still, it is Saturday morning, and I wanted to make sure that throughout the weekend that I would get down into the 160s, and here I am. 169.7 on Saturday morning. That is a loss of 1.1 pounds, so that's good. Anything over one always makes me happy. If I lose one point anything, even if it's 1.0, it just makes me really, really happy. So, um, all in all, on day four, I am down. 3.2 pounds. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to be discouraging to those who have a significant more t amount of weight to lose than me. I mean, I don't like watching videos of people who are in the 140s talking about how they need to lose 20 pounds. So, um, so I get it. So I, I'm sorry if my numbers um, aggravate you. It's just that for me personally, I lived um, the past, let's say, well, the majority of my life, I kind of lived in the 150s. Now, we started off in the 120s when I got married. I basically was happy in the 130s through my marriage until I had my first kid. Oh, it's being canceled. Okay, let me go ahead. Hang on one second. Let me just hit screenshot because the class was canceled and I'm out. Okay. Um, so then I was kind of in the 130s at the, you know, or lower 130s throughout my marriage. I was married for about six or seven years before I had my first child. And then I was kind of in the low 140s um, and would stay in the 140s. If I got to the upper 140s, I would lose weight, go on some sort of diet, uh, kind of get back down again to the lower 140s in an attempt to try to get to the 130s. Um, and then after baby number two came, I kind of lived my life in the 140s, upper 130s, 140s. Um, after baby number three came, I kind of lived my life in the 150s. <laughs> and then as age has progressed um, and I got into my 40s, it was 150s to lower 160s, basically. Um, my sweet spot was always around 155, sort of where um, I was trying to be healthy and trying to exercise every day. I would always kind of be around the mid 150s. Um, so then I would say in my upper mid 40s, upper 40s, like there was a period of time where I had a couple years where I just kind of lived in the 160s. And I wasn't really happy with it, but it's just kind of where everything went. And I really believed because people kept saying, lose all the weight you need to before you hit 40, the age of 40. Um, and so I just, I heard that numerous times and I just kind of thought, well, now I'm solidly in my 40s. So I, this is just what it's going to be. I'm going to be in the 160s and that's my life and I'm too old now to lose the weight. It's too hard. I can't do it. My body won't let me do it. I'm just older and I'm carrying more weight. And then I did the HCG diet and I started off in the 160s on it and I lost like 27 pounds, something like that. And then I realized, no, my body can lose weight. I'm just eating too much food because I was moving every day. Um, and I thought it was restricting kind of what I was eating, but not really, clearly. Um, restrict yourself to 500 calories a day and then you'll see if you can lose weight or not, right? 
Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I was thrilled. Now that was, you know, about three years ago. And after that period of time, I've pretty much been staying in the 150s again. You know, I kept saying I was going to stay in the 140s. I literally got into the 130s again. I was like, like 138, 137, something like that. And this for a brief time. <laughs> And then I kind of went and I thought, oh, 140s is still good because I still like nothing fit me in my closet. I didn't have anything that fit me in the 130s and low, low 140s. Um, but I didn't care. Like I was ready to just go buy a whole new wardrobe. I didn't care what it costs. And I don't like shopping typically. That's kind of why I have so many different sizes of clothes. I'm just like, you yeah. um, know, shopping's not my thing. Most women love to shop. I don't. I think it's because I just don't like trying things on and seeing myself in the mirror and, you know, I don't like that whole process. But, I, you know, once you're down, after you're used to kind of living in the upper 160s and you're down to 141, um, it is motivating. I was so ready and I just kept thinking, I'm going to keep this off for six months to nine months and then buy a whole new wardrobe. And it didn't happen. I kind of got myself back up to where... Uh, a lot of the clothes were just big and loose on me and I had enough pants that would stay on. Like at first I had no shorts that would even stay on. They just like slide and fall right off. It was such a good feeling. It was so great. <sighs> if only we could live there. You know, it would help if, I don't know. I don't know what would help. It would help if I had a husband that wasn't a sweet addict um, and uh, a son who wasn't a carb addict that lived in my house. I live completely on my own. I think it would be easier to do this, but that's not what I'm wishing for. I don't. <laughs> Life is too short. I'm so sad that two of my daughters are already gone out of the house. I have one kid left, so I am not wishing the time away. I will take weight over not having a family. Um, so don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm just saying it does make it difficult. My husband has been better. Um, <clears throat> about, I mean, all I have to do is remind him. I just have to constantly remind him. When you buy something that you know that I'm tempted by, hide it in the house. And and <laughs> I want to say he's better about hiding it well. He used to hide it. I'd find everything all the time. I'd go in some cupboard and there, you know, move something to get something. It would be there. Like, now he's he's pretty good about, like, keeping it in the backseat of his car where I'll never go <laughs> and that kind of thing. Although I'm learning some of these spots. So, like, when I'm really craving something and I know he bought it, I can sniff it out within a couple hours. I've got it. And he'll be like, oh, I've hit it. You'll never find it. I find it all the time. He's so bad at hiding. So, <laughs> um... So there we go. So that's my whole backstory as to the weight and why I kind of freaked when I was in the 170s. And listen, after loading, the scale said 178.9. We are talking 1.1 pound away from 180, a number I haven't seen since I was pregnant. <laughs> I've never have been 180 ever. Um, if I would hit the 170s, I would always be like, oh, I need to diet. So <clears throat> it's not comfortable in my body. I don't feel comfortable in my skin at all right now. Um, I'm like 169.7. Okay. I still in this high part of the 160s. Like it's hard for me to bend over to lift my leg up and tie my shoe. Like my body's just not bending that way. I'm only 5'4". I'm not that tall. So um it, you know, the weight's going this way. My legs are getting better. That's, you know, bigger, not better. My legs are getting bigger. It's harder to bend them to like, you know, to reach things and all that. It's, um, I put my coat on and zip it up and it just feels snug on me now and tight. And when you have like a sweater and a coat, it's winter time where I live. Um, and you're driving in the car. It's just not comfortable to feel like you're restricted and it's hard to move. It's hard for me to reach to grab the purse or my cell phone or something like that. I just, I'm not comfortable in my skin right now. And I need to get out of that period and get back into my, my happy spot where I feel like I can move around and, and I have more energy is 155, the kind of standard. I would love to be at 145. That would be my ideal. Um, I would just be happy to live 147 to 149 just to see a four on the scale every day and and to know that I was at like six pounds, six or seven pounds less than that 155 would make me feel like, I mean, I do have a ton of energy. I find myself running up and down steps and everything as opposed to walking places and hopping on things and moving around and just being more active when you have less weight. I mean, it makes sense. If you're carrying around less weight, you would have more energy because it's easier. And then of course your body is smaller, so it's easier to maneuver and move and, and do different things and jump up when you're laying down. Um, 
I think of that like in, in the summertime, a lot of times I like to spend like an hour just kind of laying on the deck with my head under the sledge so it's in the shade and then my body's just getting a little tan. It's not ideal. It's not good. You know, I mean, they say stay out of the sun, but when you live in Cleveland and you have your whole life, <laughs> it's just, it's just such a treat to lay in the sun. I also <clears throat> have to take vitamin D. I get a little bit of that sad stuff where um, winters without the sun affect me. So summer times are just so joyous to have that much sun shining all the time. Love it. All right. Um, that was way more. None of this was in the first video. I'm so sorry. This video is going to be long. All right. Um, anyway, I just wanted to explain why for me, I'm not even thrilled that I'm at 169.7 now. Most of the times I'd go on HCG, I was less than 169.7 when I started it. So um, my goal for myself is to lose another 15 pounds in less than 30 days, in like 25 days, something like that. I have a scrapbooking retreat coming up on February 7th. Today is January 11th. Um, if I can get myself into the weight range that I normally am, which is 155, when I see everybody, I'll just feel better about myself. And I know I'm going to be eating things I'm not supposed to be eating, but um, that's another reason that the scale is going to go up a little bit, excuse me, over the course of that weekend. Um, I will try to be good. I always try to be good, but um, I, I, you know, I, I just know myself. I, I don't put unrealistic expectations on myself, but I do believe that it is a realistic expectation to think that within less than 30 days, I can lose 15 pounds on the HCG diet. Yeah, I can. So I just am going to have to be a little bit better um, than I probably norm normally am on the diet. I do a lot of, I, I take a lot of liberties in my substitutions and let's talk about that. Yesterday, what did I eat? I had my salad. I have the chicken sitting there in the refrigerator, but no, 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 no. For the longest time, for over a week now, I've seen some leftover meatballs. I had meatballs for, well, for 11 days because for New Year's Eve, I had meatballs um, as one of the appetizers. So um, my daughters had been slowly eating them as like a snack or making a meatball sandwich or having meatballs with something else and making some pasta and putting meatballs on it. So I had some meatballs and sauce left. Um, there were three meatballs left in there and a whole bunch of... Um, tomato sauce. It was a good tomato sauce. Lots of chunks of tomato in it and you could taste the basil and oregano. It was, you know, the good stuff I get from Costco. So <laughs> everything's from Costco. I seriously get almost all my food from Costco. Um, it just tastes good and it's, uh, anyway, it's a little bit more expensive, but um, you can also buy in bulk there. You know, everything comes in larger quantities, so I'm not going there as often. Um, as I needed to when I was going to a grocery store. All right. Um, and I do try to shop sales. Let's just put it that, you know, like the tomato sauce I have, I must have like six jars of it downstairs, but that's because they come in packages of three. And when they're on sale, like $4 and 50 cents off for a package, you know, buying in bulk is economical to begin with, probably not considerably cheaper because Costco tends to have higher end foods, more organic -y kind of foods, healthier foods. Um, and sometimes just trendy foods that are more expensive and don't need to be. But um, they, and they usually have options too. And they have Kirkland brand of stuff. So um, I try to still shop economically if I can. And if something is on sale, I buy that in bulk. I buy the bulk in bulk <laughs> and keep it downstairs in my basement. So um, there you go. I don't know why I feel like I need to justify any of this to you all, but it's just explaining um, what I eat and why I mention Costco so often. Um, okay, uh, yesterday, so what I ate, I ate those three meatballs, and I had a huge bowl just full of lettuce, and then I cut up the meatballs into like one meatball into like nine pieces so that it was filled throughout, and I put it, and I put, I would scoop out of the sauce like tomatoes, full tomato. So I was still getting the sauce, but I was getting kind of um, as much tomato and just kept stirring it in the salad until it felt like there was a light coating on all of the lettuce. So I basically had like a, a tomato sauce salad dressing, if you will, with some three, a total of three meatballs in the whole thing. Um, so it was definitely, 
well, it was definitely less than seven ounces, which is the total amount of protein that you should have in the day. Um, it probably was close to, I didn't weigh it, but it probably was close to about 3.5 ounces worth of meat, I would say. Um, so I had that later on in the day. Of course, I was hungrier because, you know, it wasn't a substantial amount of meat. Um, and I didn't do any um, cheese, eliminating the cheese. I got there. I told you, I just needed a day or two to kind of wean myself into this. Um, so I resisted all the cheese that's shredded cheese that's sitting there in the refrigerator. And um, later on, I needed something to eat. And I grabbed, I have some really, really, really thinly sliced chicken um, that was almost gone. And it's from a couple weeks ago. It's uh, lunch meat, but it was like from a grocery store. This wasn't the like good thick chicken that I talked about before that I get at Costco. It's like the really thinly sliced, I don't know, you know, what uh, Oscar Mayer, I don't know who makes it, but the, the plastic containers that you can get of lunch meat chicken in the deli area. So um, I probably, it's really, really, it's like very thin maybe four slices of that. I don't know. I took like a tiny little hunk of it. I tried to break it in half. I think I ate more than half of the two. So there's a little bit left over. I thought I'd save it as a protein snack for another day. Um, but I feel like I've had it long enough that it's going to start getting bad soon. So I chose to have that. And wouldn't you know, it wasn't quite enough. But another hour later, I went and grabbed a handful of those peanuts. So I had two protein sacks later on, but the equivalent, it definitely wasn't 3.5 ounces. So the equivalent of them together was probably another 3.5. So I'm okay with that. Um, had no fruits. I typically don't do fruits on this, and that'll be another video. Uh, we're going to write to fruit or not to fruit. All right. So today we're talking about sauces, spices, and condiments, I said. Um, it won't take that long, um, but I'm going to go through and talk about what is acceptable on this diet. Now, I have already eliminated um, – oh, let me start – I'm sorry. I, on the last video after I recorded the, I had like two tabs up with information and the one tab specifically mentioned, um, I just want to make sure I get the name right, salad dressings that are now acceptable. So now when I talk about what's acceptable on this diet now, these are things that aren't in the original protocol. So I did mention some um, uh, spices and that that were in the original protocol that are okay. Um, again, the original protocol written by Dr. Simeons was back in the 1960s. So we know more now than we knew in the 1960s. If you want to stick to the original protocol to the letter of the law, you can do that um, and watch the video for that. This is a video of um, additional things. I did another video on uh, vegetables and fruits that you can also have in addition to what's on the original protocol in the prior videos. Um, now, one salad dressing that people mention often is called uh, Simply Girl. And the reason why is because this is sweetened with um, stevia. And stevia is now considered to be um, the benchmark of sweeteners that you should have. And sweeteners are going to be another, see, look at me write this down so I don't forget. So sweeteners... Um, Basically, you can have any sweetener. It's just that we know now that the stevia is, is a better for your body. It's healthier for you because it is um, natural. Somehow, they managed to get from the stevia plant a natural sweetener that um, is calorie-free. So, um, Simply Girl dressings. I have never seen them, I'll be honest with you, but then again, I don't really look for salad dressings very often, so I should. I should find this Simply Girl and try a bottle of their honey mustard. Let's see if I have a list. There's oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know if I can see them large enough. I'm going to have to get really close here. Let me see if I can just make my screen bigger and read what we have here. We have... Oh, okay, these aren't all salad dressings. A lot of these are uh, dressing and marinades or, okay, so one is a hot sauce. Um, there's two barbecue sauces, a Southern and a Carolina Kick. I'm guessing Carolina Kick has got a little bit of zing to it. Um, 
There is a vinaigrette. I don't like vinaigrettes at all. It's a separate video. I don't really like salad dressings in general. I really only like a Caesar and a honey mustard. Um, but if you like that, there is a, a sweet mustard, which I'm guessing is equivalent to honey mustard. It looks not creamy and thick like I'm used to. Um, there's a balsam balsamic vinaigrette. Don't understand balsamic vinaigrette. I mean, I can tolerate a vinaigrette if I have to and eat it, but a balsamic vinaigrette is downright offensive to me. You put it on something, I just can't even eat it. Like, I would rather not eat, even if I'm starving, than put balsamic vinaigrette in my mouth. So, but people love it. Many people love it. I just have different taste buds. All right, the last one is a citrus ginger. So that sounds good. That sounds like something a lot of people would like. <laughs> it's not something I would like, but it sounds like something that a lot of people would like. Uh, just not me. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to try to make my screen smaller now so that everything else is not so huge. Okay. All right, let's go ahead now and talk about other condiments. Um, that we can have on this. So coconut oil is one of them. Now this is exciting because coconut oil um, is something that like you can kind of like fry chicken in and, and cook different stuff in. If you're used to using butter or oil to cook and you're not allowed to have any butters or oils, you can use coconut oil. Yes! Again, got a big tub from Costco. Probably got more than I needed to because I did not realize that the coconut oil would have such a strong coconut flavoring. That's great if you want to make a dessert, um, but I don't like a lot of my meats tasting like coconut. To me, coconut is a dessert, and I don't like, you know, like I wouldn't, I would never order a, a coconut flavored chicken off of a menu at a restaurant. Um, but that being said, if you need to use it, you can use it. And there, I, maybe I'll do a whole separate video on coconut oil, um, but it's because um, it. It uses medium chain triglycerides, which is processed in your body different than um, other oils. I'll look up and get a little bit more coconut oil um, specifics on that to explain it to you. Uh, but basically, it's just broken down in your body different, so it's not stored as fats. It's burned quicker uh, than every other regular fat. So coconut oil, okay. Uh, something else that is on this list that is approved is um, almond milk, unsweetened, make sure it's unsweetened almond milk, um, or any other nut milk as long as it's unsweetened, um, including coconut milk. All those milks that are not your standard regular milk that are unsweetened you can use. All right, um, let's see, we have lemon juice, squeezed lemon juice, but they say only about two uh, tablespoons in a day, uh, half and half, if you want to put half and half in your coffee, about two tablespoons. Now, um, on the original protocol, I'm pretty sure, I'll have to look this up again, I think as he said you could have one tablespoon of milk in your coffee sparingly, not every day. Um, so there you go. I, I have also seen, well, MCT oil, and that's similar to coconut oil in terms of um, the chains and all that, but anyway, MCT oil, okay, liquid smoke I've seen. I don't know what liquid smoke is, but it's okay. I would think that it's something that you pour into your food to give it a smoky, like make it taste like it was a smoked meat, but I don't know. Um, jams and jellies from a brand called Nature's Hollow. So uh, they use a special sweetener in their jams and jellies, and so um, it is... Uh, an artificial sweetener. There's no added sugars in it, so basically you're kind of just eating the fruit. I would imagine you should really use it sparingly, um, you know, maybe a tablespoon at most, and don't use it every day, but it's okay. Um, we mentioned protein powder when we talked about protein supplements. Um, curry paste, if you're into some spicy Indian type food, that is okay. Um, let's see, what else do I see here? Uh, that looks like about everything. Now, um, when you're cooking, you can, if you are a pasta addict, I don't love pasta, I can live on potatoes, but I don't like pasta at all, but some people really, really, really miss their pasta, and so there is a substitute, and they're called miracle noodles, 
and they are okay on this diet. And people who are on the uh, any like really restrictive uh, no carb, low carb diets, they always say miracle noodles are okay. So go ahead and make miracle noodles. You can have those. Of course, you can make noodles out of, you know, like different vegetables and that, how people normally, uh, not normally, but people do on, on these diets. But these are actually pasta noodles, but made in such a way that it's not really pasta, but they taste more like pasta than like taking a vegetable and making it into a spaghetti looking shape and calling it, it's kind of like, what did I have the other day? Oh, cauliflower. Um, mashed cauliflower. It was in, in lieu of mashed potatoes. It was mashed cauliflower, which I've read many times. And, you know, I love potatoes. Mashed cauliflower tastes nothing like a mashed potato. It doesn't taste anything like any potato. It tastes like cauliflower. <laughs> so, and not that I hate cauliflower, but if you're expecting a potato, it's a disappointment. So I, I can't vouch for the whole miracle noodle thing. I'm not going to buy them because I'm not going to eat them. And everyone else in my family will just eat regular noodles. That's the good part about me and my life is my family can cook noodles every single day. I have zero temptation to eat them. All right. It's more of a texture thing. It kind of feels like maggots in my mouth. I must have at some point been eating noodles as a kid and saw something on TV that had maggots and I made the connection because I don't know why, but I, that's what my brain thinks. Um, all right. Um, okay, we talked about the different milks. Um, uh, bouillon cubes for cooking um, sauces. If you want to make a, a bouillon sauce for cooking um, chicken or beef or whatever, uh, better than bouillon it's called. So better than bouillon must not have additional sugar added to it. So you can use those. Uh, nutritional yeast. Okay. I think we do a whole lot of baking on this diet, but that is okay. Um, oh, Walden Farms. I have heard that the brand Walden Farms is really good as well. So we talked about Simply Girl, Walden Farms as well. Uh, Walden Farms makes um, dressings as well. That was actually the original. Before I heard of Simply Girl, I heard of Walden Farms. I forgot about that until I saw it on this list. Um, so Walden Farms brand is also made with no sugar added. Um, they also make a caramel syrup. So I suppose if you want to treat yourself like once a week and uh, cut up some apples and get the caramel syrup from Walden Farms and drizzle that on top, you can have an extra special dessert. All right, remind myself to talk about apple desserts. Okay, okay. I'm so sorry that I like to put my head down and ignore you when I take notes to myself, but I will forget. Um, okay, other ingredients that you can bake with. They say dark chocolate as long as it's sugar-free and the cocoa is uh, greater than 85%, which tastes really bad, but I suppose you could add a, I mean, some people might like it. To me, it's extremely bitter and it doesn't taste at all like chocolate. Um, but you could add an artificial sweetener to it if you want. And again, kind of warm that up, I suppose. You know, melt down the chocolate, add some artificial sweetener and drizzle that on an apple or, or strawberries. Okay, um, there's PB2 peanut butter powder. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It literally is a powder. It's peanut ground down into a powder in a um, container. Not refrigerated and that, just on the shelf. You can get it at Walmart. And you mix water in it and you make your own peanut butter. So it's... Um, no sugar added, just peanuts basically. So you can have peanut butter if you want. Again, if you're not used to having peanut butter without sugar, if you're used to always having Jif, um, even the ones that say natural have sugars added to them. Um, you truly have to get 100% peanut ground to have the healthy peanut butter. I believe um, Costco makes that and an almond butter as well that are 100% natural, that are just ground up almonds and, and peanuts and um, they probably add a little oil to it to keep it in that form uh, but this is this is um, just powder okay um, Zevia diet soda so if you need to have a diet soda Zevia is what is recommended now I said before I have a little bit of soda in each one of my drinks um, that I have every day Zevia is made with stevia Stevia is considered the benchmark of and the best kind of sweetener. And now they're saying the only kind of sweetener you should have on this diet. 
because in the original protocol there was no stevia. Um, Zevia drinks, I tried them. Struggled to drink them. I didn't think they were that great. Didn't taste anything like a Pepsi or certainly a Diet Cherry Pepsi. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm still a little sick. Or Diet Cherry Pepsi, which is my favorite. Um, but that's acceptable. All right. Vanilla bean powder. Not sure what you're going to do with it, but that's okay. Um, now, uh, carb fillers. We love car carbs, right? A wasa cracker is something that's okay. Stoned wheat thins, just two of them. So if you don't, if you don't want to have that grassini stick and the melba toast, which is better, but you just feel like you need to have something crunchy and you want to substitute that for a different kind of carb, you can have two stone ground wheat thins, not the regular wheat thins, okay? Two of those. So that's a nice treat. Um, or a quarter of a smart bun. These are gluten-free buns that you can have a quarter of. Now this list doesn't mention um, Ezekiel bread, uh, which is sprouted grain bread that you can buy on the shelf at Trader Joe's, but it's in the refrigerated section of Costco. Um, I haven't bought it yet because at Costco you buy them in packages of two so there's two packages I almost bought it when my girls were home because I asked them if they kind of wanted to have it too and then we just kind of decided to get regular bread because the carb count was still really high on it but I've heard people say because it's sprouted I eh, I have to do some research on Ezekiel bread um, but I, I've heard rave things about Ezekiel bread and my daughter who's from California of course is all into all the healthy stuff in that too she's heard a lot about it too but she was shocked when she looked at we looked at the carb content and the uh, and the ingredient label and just went yeah we need to do more research it didn't seem that much better for the price so um, that's something that maybe I'll do in another video I'll do some Ezekiel bread research and uh, see if that's okay because I know people on low carb diets were having it too but the carbs were high I guess I didn't really look at the fiber I know you're supposed to eliminate the fiber minus the fiber from the carbs and then get the um, net carbs but okay all right, so that's everything. That's the whole list. I'm sorry it took longer than I expected. My apologies. I didn't mean for it to go this long. Did a lot of chatting in the middle, but at least you now have other options of things that you can eat on this diet if you feel like I just need variety or you need to spice up what I'm eating a little bit. You know what's not listed on there was mustard. I 100% believe mustard is fine. I'm pretty sure mustard is a zero calorie sweetener. I'm surprised that mustard wasn't on there. I'm going to add my own. I'm going to say you can have mustard too. Have some mustard. <laughs> Basically, if there's no carbs and there's no sugar in it, it's okay. So um, I would think mustard's okay too. All right, so that's everything. Way too long. My apologies. I'll talk to you tomorrow with another update on how we're doing, and I don't know which one of these topics I'm going to pick, um, but I'll pick one. Um, of these that I've been writing down as I've been talking to you and uh, talk about that and uh, I'll need to lose a half a pound every day to hit my goal so hopefully my goal I my prayer is that these next couple of days I still have at least a pound lost for like two or three more days because um, as the diet goes on it gets harder and harder to lose you know the numbers the amount you're losing is a little bit smaller you all have peaks and valleys on different days but um, your body kind of starts getting adjusted to it and you can even hit a, up to a whole week three to seven days of a stall at some point so um, I really hope the next couple of days I can see a one point something on the scale so we'll see all right Love to you all. Stay on track, and I'll see you tomorrow. It'll be shorter tomorrow, I promise. Bye-bye.